Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. A couple of days ago I had to cut down a small uh, ornamental maple and I got a, two little logs like this out of it. So in this video you're going to see what happened to them. So I managed to get two small logs out of this. This one I've already cut uh, a length equal to the maximum diameter and uh, I discovered that uh, this what looks like rot is indeed rot. I can stick the dental tool right into it. Uh, at the other end, fairly hard but still not not good. So um, this is going to get cut across here. There's the pith. So it's going to be cut basically in that, uh, that alignment and uh, that should miss it at the other side. So do and that line is not the same as it is here so I'll cut it through there end grain um, and uh, the other one had some ants living in it or they came out of in here uh, I've sprayed that um, but again that was where the rot started so that's going to get a cut out uh, doesn't even cross my mind to turn this as a whole piece um, partly because of the rot, but even if I didn't have the rot, uh, it's likely to split from the center. So, uh, and there's a separate little video all about that. So, we'll cut this one first, and uh, so at least I've got uh, one blank ready to go. And I know where I'm going to start. I can uh, line it up with that little bit of bark, and basically just eyeball it. Maybe not that way up, that's a bit rocky, so we'll do it on the other side where it doesn't rock so much. It's quite hard. And that basically is rubbish unless I want to try cutting some small squares out of it. If it was very good, yep, might even keep that for pens or something. Not that I've ever made a pen or ever will. Somebody else will use it, or I could even make a very small bowl out of it. Just lining up centre with the blade from underneath. So, that's the lost the rotten bit. This bit. Yeah. No stop on this saw, so that's the way I do it. Right, so this will now go on the lathe. Or not that bit, this bit. So I've drilled a hole, uh, more or less at centre, done it by eye. Uh, it goes on to the screw chuck and lock the spindle and then cinch it up. The main thing first is to uh, get it pretty well round. This is going to be the bottom. And I want to foot on it fairly quickly so that 
it spins on the chuck at least I can grab that now come up here and uh, finger underneath the rest just ease the tool forward my thumb to get it round up at the top sounds right let's check all right still a little bit of bark there so i can just heave that off now that's oh, it's more there that's very green it's actually green green the color green Well, that's a bit of MDF coming off first. Right. Wing of the tool just to ease that in on the bottom. It's a half inch spindle guard which is what I normally use for roughing down the outside of the bowls. And uh, now I set the size of the foot and uh, the dividers are already set. So mark with the left so it lines up with the right across centre. So I just need to make sure uh, there's no bark within that circle and there isn't. So and it goes straight in to set the foot diameter. Now I quite like this to be a little decorative bowl uh, with a kind of it's going to be outflowing and therefore when it warps as it dries doesn't feel that wet really considering it's summer and the sap's rising but um, I wanted to the the growth rings here are going to try and straighten themselves out so with the pith in the middle uh, that would mean that the pith sits up and the sides are put on either side so that's where I'm going with this uh, and I want to uh, I'm going to cut a concave uh, hole in here. I'm doing this with an asymmetric 3-8 spindle gouge, fairly steep right wing so I can get a nice clean cut on the inside. I'll just hog it out first. And now I can come in. Oh, isn't that lovely? in on that, on that uh, foot diameter, go in very slightly, very slightly dovetailed, tool on its side and then just stroke the surface back so I've got a little round at the bottom of the curve. And then just take this foot down a wee bit and undercut it. I want a fairly good uh, cove in there because I might have to sand off the, the rim just to make the whole thing flat. Not much shape on this foot at the moment so I'm just going to get a bit of a curve that way. Looks better. a very nice clean cut. Uh, really need to sand it fortunately um, but with wet wood this is not particularly wet. Um, it's not dripping. I'm not being sprayed with it. So I'm going to start with 180 grit. Uh, I'm going to use the worn bit first just to kind of, you know, there is dust coming off. Um, 
So I'm just going to try and dry the surface, if you like, with friction, and then uh, it'll be just like sanding as normal. a bit of a knocking or something there just doesn't feel quite right teeny bit of bark there not enough to worry about I can see a little bit of moisture coming through there on the end grain they're going to sand this in reverse as well Pretty clean cut, so it doesn't need too much sanding. And and a bit of uh, blue, which is 240 grit. You can see more dust coming off now. Because this is damp, I'm not going to put any finish on at the moment. Right, so that's that, and so it can turn round into the into the chuck. This chuck's suffering a little bit from rust. Uh, I don't know quite why. I didn't think I had anything wet on yesterday, but I must have done. So that's the end of that bit of blue. Now, it's. I'm going to run the wrist. Normally I'd put a bit of plastic in here just to protect the foot, but um, I might well take this foot off anyway, or, most, or reshape it. The jaws are locked absolutely right down there. I couldn't have got that any finer if I'd wanted to. So with shark jaws here, and uh, I'm going to gauge the wall thickness here by light. So using a 3 8 uh, deep glued bowl gouge, using the wing of the tool just to smooth this off. And a bit more speed. Ease the right wing in. Just take that very sharp edge off, and the speed is about 1700. It was me partly wondering how it's going to uh, not block your view. Try not to do it again. Move the light a bit. Right, so I've got a little metal bracket here, and uh, I want a nice bright light behind the uh, end of it I'm going to cut. So finger behind the tool, so the beak on the other side, to support the uh, it's happening. I really like that out of my vision, you'd probably like it out of yours as well. That's my, out of my sight, and I'm beginning to see it, feel it pale over at about five o'clock. Right. 
Uh, watching what's happening at about four o'clock over the other side. Now it's not. Not completely clear timber in, in that it's got the dark patches so the light doesn't come through quite as well as it might if it was absolutely clear timber. Now the rest is coming up a bit so I use the scraper it's tilted down very slightly at centre there. That doesn't want to cut so going to the grinder. It takes longer for the grinder to start up and slow down than it does for me to sharpen the tool. So that's that. So that's kind of going in firmly. And I still haven't got quite enough light. Forgotten that was attached. No, I think so. yeah, it seems to be. No, I can take a teeny bit more out there, down in there. Right, 180 grit again. a nice clean cut there really isn't that much sanding right 240 grit So that, as expected, has um, got a little bit of um, stain. So we'll just get that off and uh, mount this between centers. So I've got a little block here, which should go into this chuck. Just lock the spindle so it can spin around. Right. So that will now go over there uh, with a little bit of non-slip cloth just to uh, stop it slipping. So here we are with the, the cloth, that and uh, and then need a little stub to um, keep the whole thing pressured on which is one of these little bits of MDF with a hole in it.
pull that round I see where it is furthest away and then pull it towards me is I find the easiest way right just a little bit off really just well I can do anything I like with the bottom now um, I usually do that with the 3 8 spindle gouge just using just to the right of the nose uh, sorry just to the left of the nose of the tool so again that wood flowing foot on it Right, so I'm going to use that wing just to take away that little, to stroke away that little curve there. I hope I've got enough wood inside. And just give it a little bit more lift here. Come in from the top, go down. That's okay. Now there's a very small line I can see in there. I'll just get rid of that with a little shear scrape. There's a slight whipping sound too, which is uh, something to do with the grain. I don't think it's too drastic. And then just sand all that. next stage is going to go into the microwave. You blew the 240 grit. little bowl and uh, we'll go and stick it in the oven and see what happens. Now here you see this bowl uh, about 18 hours later it's been drying overnight after a minute in the microwave oven on cook and I also made the other blank but unfortunately I forgot to check that the video was shooting and it just the camera just took a photograph um, but this came out very nicely warped a little bit more as you can see and uh, the small bead I've left on it just emphasizes the warping now this bowl is wobbling very slightly the base isn't absolutely flat so the way to sort that out is to get a bit of abrasive down and just push it across the flat and that should in next to no time render it flat right that's it now in addition to these two uh, I made these two and you'll see those in their own video So I'm pleased with the way uh, that all turned out and it was only growing, what, three days ago now.